Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my September 2024 reading wrap-up. I don't have a huge number of books, uh, I haven't been reading as much lately as I used to, but we'll go ahead and get started. So Dane reads. So, up first we have Megan Mog by Jan Pienkowski, I think is how you pronounce her name. Uh, this was a reread for me, it's a, a series I used to love as a kid, it's about a witch called Meg um, and her cat called Mog. And uh, yeah, it was really sweet. The only downside was I got my copy cheap from a charity shop. Really only got it just because I used to love these books when I was a kid. And um, the last page was missing. So I don't really know how it ended, but I can kind of guess um, because it's a children's book. So yes, I give it a 3.5 out of 5 anyway. Uh, next up we have Just Ignore Him by Alan Davis. So this is a four out of five, but a very tough read. So Alan Davis, he's mostly known for playing Jonathan Creek, uh, who's a detective on TV. He's also the only kind of consistent member of uh, the panel on QI, uh, which is like a panel show. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You either know what it is or you don't know what it is. Um, but anyway, he's a very funny guy. Like he used to be in stand-up comedy and all of that stuff. Um, but. I was expecting this like memoir of his. I mean, I did go into it blind. I didn't know anything about it other than that he was the guy who wrote it. And I was expecting it to be a funny read. It was not funny, it was harrowing. Um, basically, it's about him coming to terms with the fact that his father used to sexually abuse him. Um, like literally the opening uh, pages of it involve him picking up a load of child porn that his dad's printed out from the internet and like not knowing what to do with it. He was gonna go and destroy it. Um, he ended up giving it to the police, which is probably for the best. Um, but yeah, then they couldn't really prosecute with it. And uh, yeah, it was just a mess. Uh, but as I say, a very poignant read. He has some very specific memories of what his father used to do to him. And his childhood in general was a bit shit. Like his mum died, his mum had a terminal illness and nobody told her that she was terminal. Um, and she died when he was a six, I think. And it just, obviously that, and then his father's sexual abuse just profoundly affected him. Um, to the point at which it's amazing that he's been able to do what he has with his life and to be so funny. And just like, you know, like when I watch him on QI and stuff, it gives me like warm fuzzies. I feel safe. Um, and it's a shame he's never been able to feel that himself. But yes, very much recommend reading that. Uh, then we have The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and Other Stories by uh, Tim Burton. This was a week 3.5 out of 5 for me. Um, it's basically like quirky Tim Burton poetry with some illustrations, which I believe he did himself. I'm not the biggest Tim Burton fan. Um, I only actually picked this up because everybody kind of raves about it. And I just feel like if this had been published by anybody else, it would have gone completely unnoticed because it's pretty unremarkable stuff. Um, if you're a Tim Burton fan, maybe you'll like it. But but for me, it, I mean, again, it, was, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't good. <laughs> Okay, then we have I Can't Accept Not Trying by Michael Jordan. Uh, and this is very short, short and sweet. It's about this thick, about 50 odd pages, mostly of images. Um, but it's his philosophy on life, including basketball, I suppose. Um, and again, you get the idea from the thing. I can't accept not trying. He's not afraid of failure. What he can't accept is not giving it a go in the first place, which I think is a healthy attitude to have. It's one of those books where it will give you some inspiration for life and you can like take away some of the lessons, some of the philosophies and apply them to your own life. But at the same time, it's not like, there's nothing like earth shattering in there, you know? It's pretty common sense stuff that he's, that he's suggesting. Um, it's just a lot of people don't have any common sense, I suppose. So again, I'll probably give it like a week 3.5 out of five. Then we have The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens. So this is my latest uh, audio book reading. Uh, heads up, I'm, I've got Barnaby Rudge next. I'm going through some of the Dickens books in uh, publication order. Curiosity Shop's probably been one of my favorites so far. I mean, Nell is a great character. Uh, there's fucking, what's his name? Um, oh, Dick. Oh, it's gone now. Hang on. Dick Swiveller, that's it. Great name. Um, interesting character as well. Uh, so let's see. So uh, I've got on Wikipedia here just to get you a very, very quick um, um, summary of it. And uh, so it says here, uh, so this along with Barnaby Rudge was serialized. It was so popular that New York readers reputedly stormed the wharf when the ship bearing the final installment arrived in 1841. Uh, Queen Victoria read it that year and found it very interesting and cleverly written. 
And this is a perfect little summary because I didn't know how to summarize it really. Uh, the plot follows the journey of Nell Trent and her grandfather, both residents of the old curiosity shop in London, whose lives are thrown into disarray and destitution due to the machinations of an evil moneylender and the grandfather's addiction to gambling. Um, and yeah, it's again, Nell is a great character. Uh, Dick Swiveller is great as well. I think part of the reason that I enjoyed it as well is like Dick Swiveller owes everybody money and so do I at the moment. So I'm a bit of a Dick Swiveller myself. Never thought I'd say that. But yeah, overall, I would say uh, The Old Curiosity Shop is a prize and hit for me. Uh, probably a strong 3.5 out of 5. I would say um, it's not, it's no um, Oliver Twist, it's no A Christmas Carol, uh, no David Copperfield, but it is up there easily, I would say, in the well, easily in the top half, probably in the top 20% of the Dickens that I've read, uh, although I do still have quite a lot more to go. All right, then we have this bad boy. This is Confessions of an Unlikely Runner by Dan, Dana L. Ayers. A full review of this coming soon, as you can tell from my tabs, is pretty much the last thing I have to, to, to film. Uh, Ayers is a former White House staffer and she's done various other bits and bobs as well. Um, and yeah, she kind of got into running by accident. Uh, and this is like her story of running. Uh, let me see if it's got the blurb of what she gets up to. Um, no, she doesn't really have like a list of the things, but she did. Um, this is a vast array of races. Uh, she did a marathon. She did like a, a long distance relay of like hundreds and hundreds of miles with people running in relays. She did Tough Mudder as well. It actually made me want to do Tough Mudder and that's what uh, this is an image of as well. So one day I will get around to doing Tough Mudder, uh, although you do get electrocuted as part of doing it and you have to sign a death waiver. So I'm now not allowed to talk about it to Shay because she's, she's scared for me. So I have to do it without her knowing I've done it. But it's okay because she's probably not watching this video so um and yeah probably a four out of five for me maybe even a 4.5 out of five probably probably not quite um but it's a very approachable running book it's a running book for people who are runners but don't really consider themselves runners um like people who are kind of always mid to back of the pack and um you know maybe walk a little bit so for some of the events and stuff uh and it kind of teaches you that that's totally fine. Everybody does things their own way, you know? But it's also a very, very funny read. And she does keep up a, a humor blog as well. Um, in fact, what is that that blog? It's at uh, dcdana.com, D-C-D-A-N-A.com. And uh, maybe check that out if you're interested in the book to see if you like her writing style. But I did, four out of five. Okay, then we have Blind Spot by Paula Hawkins. Uh, pretty bog standard thriller it's one of the uh, quick read series that is designed to kind of get people into reading and um it's basically about these three childhood friends uh, uh, a, a girl and two boys and then they grow up the girl ends up with one of the boys and uh there's something dark happened in the past and then her husband ends up dead and we're not quite sure what happened um i read it in like one go on a bus journey and i enjoyed it i would probably give it a yeah, let's give it a week four out of five. Um, certainly better than uh, The Girl on the Train, I thought. Um, and yeah, it, just if you're into like thrillers and that kind of thing, you're going to like it. Lots of twists and turns to keep it going. And finally, we have Planet of the Apes by Pierre Boulle, which was a five out of five for me. Another contender for book of the year. Um, I've never seen Planet of the Apes and I only know like vague bits of uh, pop culture references and things like that. Uh, I saw it in a charity shop and picked it up thinking, oh, I'll read it, it'll be all right. I wasn't expecting it to be like one of the best classic sci-fi novels that there is. Um, some really good stuff in there. Actually, it's also got like quite a positive like vegan message as well because it's got, you know, the apes hunt, hunt, hunting humans. It's just really beautifully written as well. I mean, obviously it's translated from French. I hopefully will one day read it in French. I think that would be really interesting. I also didn't know that Bull also wrote The Bridge on the River Kwai, which is a very different film or book, but it's odd that those two have both kind of become classics. So I want to check out some more of his stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm a, you know, I'm down with like Asimov and uh, Arthur C. Clarke are probably my two favorite uh, sci-fi writers. Um, if you're into either of those two, I think you're gonna like Planet of the Apes. Don't discount it just because of, you know, you think you know the story. And don't, like it is like, it's like hard sci-fi, I would say. Uh, it's got all your space travel stuff, but then it's got like a lot of biology and, and stuff as well. So sociology, all of that stuff. So yes, those are all of the books that I read in September. As always, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot.
Bye-bye.